Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. Which I'm not quite sure why. Uh, you, I need to change that one over as well. So we will drive in front ways first and we will put the front mower in here like this. Lower that one down and drop it there. And then we will put the back mower down. And the back mower, we have to just drop it from a great height and dump it onto the ground. Which I always find slightly painful. Would help if I actually had it selected there. I don't actually like doing that at all. So what we will do this time is we will do the one next to the cows right here. We'll do this field first. So I will go manually around the outside once. And then once we've done that, I can then leave the hired help to just go and finish off the field. It doesn't take very long to finish off the job, does it? It doesn't take very long at all. So we started up like this. And then we move the wheels in like that, so they point right inside, and that chucks any of the grass in towards the middle of the field, rather than sending it towards the outside edge of the field. So I will go racing down across here, like this, which is around the other end as well, and... Then I can leave. I'm just wondering if I should go round all of the fields a minute and just kind of like take care of all of them a second and then go back through. I'm not sure though. I don't, I don't think I will. I think I will leave it like um, just like have the hired help carry on with this one and then we'll go and do the next one manually and so on and so forth. There is one thing I am going to do, and that little tiny bit that they've gone and cut up there, I am actually going to go and get that because otherwise it's kind of going to be left there and it's going to irritate me and I don't want it to irritate me like that so we will then lift this one up bring this over this way like this drop you down there like that and off you go so the hired help will always run with it straight it will never actually run with it in any other way and we can leave that. So he hasn't got very long to go. The corn is almost done as well. So I need cultivating underway. I need all sorts of things underway. So you stop right there. I'll start you up again. And just go and get these little tiny bits right here. I don't need to. I know we don't need to. But we're going to just pick them up anyway and then there's gonna be there's another few little bits over on this other field I'll bring the um, the truck over in a minute we'll put the combines down here I'm just gonna move them off the edge of the field so that they're slightly out of the way and then we will bring the truck over and the truck can unload the combines So I'll drop you down there like that and just pick up everything on that bit and then we'll do the same over on that one there and then we'll come down here and we'll grab these couple of little bits down here, like this. There we go. And then spin back up around. Grab those bits. Grab those bits there. And everything is neat and tidy. Everything is tidy and neat. Everything is in its place. So I'll shut you off there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on the slope like this. And I'm going to put that one out. And go to the other combine here. And I'm going to bring you down onto that slope as well. And I'm going to put the spout on the other side. I'm hoping that my... I didn't actually want to do that. Hoping that my machinery will be able to go underneath both of the spouts without too much trouble. Should be able to. So we'll whiz you around like that. You wouldn't really want to be driving that fast down a hill and then spinning round in a combine in real life because there'd be a good chance that you would um the combine would might might tip over if you were to do something like that okay you are just about done and we kind of need to keep the grass going i know i've got the plowing and we've also got cultivating and stuff going as well but we will kind of 
keep our focus on this one now for keeping this one running. The cultivating and planting and so on. Yes, they still need, they do need to be done, but we can kind of like focus on some other bits instead. So I'll just back you up a little bit. You've stopped a little tiny bit early just there. I'll do that. I'm going to run you around to the next field, which is this one over here. And then we will go to the new field last this time round. So I'll bring you over this side. And I'm actually going to start you right over on this side. For no other reason than I just kind of feel like it today. Bring you up to there. So what I'll do here is I will lower it down. I'm not going to start it yet. I'm going to lower it, put the wheels into place like that, and then bring the tractor in round, and then we will start turning. Bring that out round like that. We've caught everything that we wanted to catch with the turner, only just though. You got it's it's surprising how far over the hay turner does move when you like you, you sort of you, you can see the width of the machine. You kind of like expect that. And I know it's angled, obviously it's gonna be shorter, but it's it's very easy to misjudge just how much shorter the thing really is, or not shorter necessarily, how much sort of out to the side of the tractor it takes. Like you, you've got to get closer to the edge of the field than you think. It's very, very easy to misjudge how close to the edge of the field you need to be. And I do that frequently with this one. Like there, I very nearly misjudged. I mean, it's usually fairly... You usually just, you know, you sort of use the, the mower width as your guide. And that's about right. But it is... E when you're going around a corner, it is fairly easy to misjudge it. Not there. Okay, that, that seems all right. And then here, now suddenly we've got loads of room. See? It's easy to misjudge. All right, I'm going to bring this one up to this point like that. And then I'm going to bring it out here. And now we will do that, which straightens out the wheels anyway. But we're going to start our actual land work from down this side. Just because it's going to be a bit easier to do it like this. I'll bring it down here. And there isn't actually enough of a f width on there to go right the way through. So what we'll do is we will just start here. And I will manually do this little piece up to here. Like that. And then I will bring it back round. And I'll go and do it again. I know you shouldn't really be driving on the hay that you've turned because it's squashing it down into the grass. The the hay, after it's turned, it sits up on top of the grass stubble. And that's good. That's where you want it to be sitting. So the air can get in underneath it. If you drive on it, obviously you're squashing it down against the ground. And then you suddenly, you've lost all of the, um, the drying potential of any breeze that might come past. And all you've got is the heat from the sun on the top. Now, I realise that some of you live in nature's equivalent of a fan oven, and so you've just got this baking heat piling down, boiling down on top of you, and so you don't really need to worry. We don't need to do any turning anyway, so this is not an, an, an issue for you in any way, shape, or form. But for those of us who don't live in um, ovens, and we live in, like, a, a more temperate climate, um... Yeah, turning is something that you have to do. We have to do this. If we're making hay, it takes about three days to dry it. You put it on the ground and you turn it. You can overturn it. You can start to break the stalks a little bit, which you don't want to do. Um, some farmers I know will turn once a day uh, for three days and then they'll bale it on the third or sometimes even fourth day. Uh, other farmers I know will try to turn once in the morning and once in the afternoon if they can if you get enough drying and very rarely you can actually mow early on the first day and bale at the end of the second day but that is an unusual occurrence normally you would be baling on day three sometimes day four depending on how well it's dried out so lots of turning is involved turning is kind of the biggest step really um you're forever driving backwards and forwards the hay turner Right, so we've got that lot doing there. I've got 
these tractors here, this one here, this is the next machine that we need to be using. We need to put you going in the field. So we're going to unhitch that one. We're going to go and get a cultivator. We're not cultivating this little field next to us. We've got some work to do in that field, actually. We've got to turn that into a more regular type of field. That more regular type of field. We've got to turn that into yard. That's, that's yard from this point on. And I'm going to get started on cultivating the big field right here. I'm going to have to go and cultivate the... Uh, actually, I'm not going to cultivate that one. I've got a plow going in here. I'll just have the... I don't really need to, do I? I just, I'll have the, I'll just cultivate it. We'll just run the cultivator in there. We'll do that as well. All right. You persuaded me we will cultivate that field in there. We won't do anything else to it. So I'm just going to do a single pass along the bottom end of the field here with this one. And then we will tidy up any extra bits that might need to be cultivated later on. So I want a single pass along there, and then I want a single pass down the side of the field right here, like this. I'm actually going to use the hired help to do that bit uh, over a fair way, but that will be fine. He's going to run all the way down to the end of the field. Once he's gotten down to the end there, I will then do a single pass along that end of the field, and then I'll bring it back over to here and we will start cultivating the whole of the field and just work our way across. I might... No, I'm not even going to bother going over there and doing a pass along there. I'm just going to do it along here. One pass along the top end. And then if there is any bits that are left over after we've done all of this, we can have a quick tidy up at the end of working the field before we go and sort of just finish the job off. So I'll bring you down to there like that. Then I will manually go across here like this. Let's bring that one out a little bit there. I think that's probably okay about there. We could maybe just creep into the edge of the field, in from the edge of the field, a little tiny bit. There we go, like that. Something along those lines. And then... I'll leave the hired help to do the rest. I'm curious how much it's going to do. I know that on this end of the field, it does make a little bit of a mess if you... Because it's because of those little banks right there. The tractor drives, tries to drive at the banks. And it is going to do that with just one pass along here. But I'm curious how well it can cope with this. It's always better if, if we've only got to do one pass on each end. It does make life a lot easier. So you head off down that way. That's a great job. You're doing a wonderful job. Let's get this one so he's off the field at least. And we get the last of the grain into here. We don't currently have a price that we can sell our corn at. The best price we got is 1216. And the best price we have ever seen for corn is 1546. Uh, so... We're 300 below, and we want to be really not much more than 150 below. So we're going to store up the last little bits that we've got here. Uh, how are you doing? Are you... You're doing just fine. I think I will... I was wondering whether or not I should use... Not you. Uh, not you. This one. And I think I will. I'm going to use this one just to do a... Okay, I definitely didn't want to do that. I want to do that. We use the super big tractor. And we will hook on the rake. And we will start doing a little bit of raking. What I could do is I could manually do the outside round on a few of these fields. So I can certainly do the outside round on this one, and then by the time I've done this one, I think the next one will be ready to go. So if I unfold this, and just the outside round, and we can quickly gather that up with the forage wagon, and then the rest of it will be much easier and quicker to go and gather up, because we won't have this bit sort of getting in the way of the hired help. So we'll just bring that through there. There. Once round, and because we used that magic, I was going to say rake, because we used the magic turner, and 
uh, we scooted the outside edge in a little bit, what we've actually got is slightly bulkier crop on the outside round. So you get a little bit more here to gather up. Run you over to here and help uh, someone has finished their job. So we'll bring you up to there and we'll stop and we'll go and get help, help of someone. Is that a bit missing over there? I think it is. Oh, there's a bit missing here because they always stop right at the end, just leaving a little tiny bit where they shouldn't, which is slightly frustrating. Is that a bit there? I don't know what that is. Okay, right, that's done. I'm going to fold you up to go on to the next field, and we'll do the outside round with this one, and then we can leave the hired help to carry on and do this last field while we use the rake and we'll go around the outside edge of this slightly bigger field that we've just finished and then by the time we've done that i don't i don't think this one will be done by that point so what we'll need to do is um we will put the forage wagon back on um well i've, I've also got the plowing to go and do so i, I might actually just focus on doing the plowing first and get that field finished so then I can get the other cultivator underway. Because we haven't done that yet and we kind of need to. Right. Bring the wheels out round where they're supposed to be. And then we can start you up. There we go. And then I run round here. So I'm going to have to do a second pass along the top end of the field here. Myself because we don't come to the very edge of the field right there. And then we run along here. So what's happening with the hay turner here on the bits that where it won't, it like it doesn't have the tip collision. It's not going to allow me to go and place anything down there. I think it just kind of like shunts it out the side of this one. But I'm not quite sure how that works. So it may shunt it out the side. It may not. I, I, I don't know. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to make any difference. The rake, also, it shouldn't affect up there. At least I'm hoping it won't. Curious if we're going to need an extra pass along this bottom end in order to allow enough room to turn round, because we are quite tight to that wall. I think I was ultimately a little bit too greedy with going up against that wall. I mean, I'm going to just... Well, I've got, I've got this extra edge to do along the top end here. Um, but then I'm going to let the hired help just carry on, and we'll see how it copes. It's the kind of situation where I'd, I'd rather just kind of like start the hired help, and then we can tidy up afterwards if we need to, rather than trying to do anything different. So I bring you in here, and then go to lift it like that, and you can just do it quickly. Just tap it really quick if you want to, and then set it down so that we've got this... Top end done here, and I just realized I probably shouldn't have gone out quite so far. It could confuse things in a little while, but never mind. Well, let it be confused. It'll be fine. I... Okay, the cultivator has stopped. And I don't know why. I'm sure it... I'm pretty sure there was a message just came up, but I wasn't really paying attention. I probably should have been. So I'm going to come down here, get to this point here, like this, and then oh, we'll lift up, we'll drive over this lot, we'll bring it in round, and I get to there, I think, doesn't matter if it overlaps here a little bit, it'll be fine, and, oop, no, I want to lower you down now, and then go, right, Hired help is dealing with that bit. That's why it's trying to climb up that mountain and turn itself round. I need to have a couple of extra passes on this end of the field for it to be able to do anything. It, it, it really doesn't like that, does it? So I'm going to set the hired help going right there. Another couple of passes across the air, I think, would probably do it. And we will go... You can sit there for a minute. I was just wondering whether I should do something with that one. We'll go back to this one. This here. Um, I'll do it there. Let's try to remember how to turn it back on again. And 
one here, and then we're going to do one pass around the other field. Then we will off-hitch the rake, and we will put on the forage wagon, and we'll gather all of that up. I mean, we may actually... No, no, no. I was, I was just thinking, we may be in time now to, like, go on to the third field and do an outside round, but then we'd have a tractor that sat there not doing anything. So I... If I do it like this, then the other tractor can sort of do the outside round on the last field. We'll do it early. We'll go and gather gather stuff up, but we won't... Actually, I wonder if we could... Try and think what would be the best way round to do this. I'm sure that there will be a best way round to do this, but I'm just trying to, like, figure it out in my head. Which tractor will do which job and when in order to maximise efficiency on the hay right here because I need to get going with the forage wagon but I do also need to go and finish doing that plowing so that I can get that tractor going with a cultivator so maybe I ought to focus on that we'll, we'll let this one run up to here and then stop and then we can go back to the plowing and I'll finish the plowing take the plow back get a cultivator on and then we'll head out to that new field that we've just gone and done and we will put the cultivator going in there and get that one started and then we can sort of worry about some of these other bits because I think that's possibly going to be the bit that we'll end up waiting for is doing all of the um the planting we got all that sugar beet to plant so let's just bring you over here like this for a minute, and then we'll go down here. So you've got about half of that field still to go, and you've got plenty up here now to be carrying on with. So you can go back to moving up and down the long lengths of the field. Hopefully this time not being quite so daft as you were just now. Off you trot. There we go. And now I can go back to this one over here. So we will engage that one and start you running up through here. So we plow out the rest of this road and then we get in close to there. We've already done two sides of the field. We just need to sort of finish this little bit off here. And then we've got that last side of the field down over there. Won't get huge chunks of that other, the, the, like the last little bit done on the field. There's not huge chunks there to take out. Mainly because um, it's... I'll just bring you back over here a minute. Um, of where the road sort of comes up. There will be some there to do, but there's not going to be as much as you'd think there sort of would be. You'd think there'd be a lot more, but there really isn't. Okay, what am I going to do on that corner? I think I'm going to have to take off a bit more on the corner of the field over there in order to make it all fit properly. I've engaged this one. i got Profi CVT. Oh, of course. Yeah, one of them is doing the hay. One of them's doing the cultivating. I need to keep an eye on the one that's doing the hay up there. And as soon as that one stops, then we can go and sort of sort out the rake. Except that I don't want to, do I? The main priority job at the moment has to be this so that we can get that cultivator going. We're in danger of having all of the planting left over. We haven't even started on planting yet. We've got lots of cultivating still to do. I don't currently have the money to go and buy a load more cultivators. Replace the cultivators we've got. So we've got quite narrow ones, so it is going to take a minute or two for them to do everything they need to do. Now, how far up is this? Oh, actually, the road's not so bad here, is it? Right. In which case, we'll line you up here. We are going to have a reasonable amount of extra field here. There's that tree down there. We're not going to worry about that tree at the moment. We'll probably worry about the tree at some point, but we won't worry about it just yet. We will focus on just sort of getting this field done and then focus on the first few passes backwards and forwards on the planting jobs and, well, cultivating jobs to start with. Uh, but where are we? Which way are we going to work this field? I'd say the direction that I'm working at the moment is slightly longer runs. So it would be better to run it this way, which means that initially we'll want a couple of passes on that end of the field. 
And a couple of passes on that end of the field. Fortunately, that end of the field, we've got the track there already. Alpha B has completed their task. That is the hay that is now fully turned. So we've got once around that out, once around the outside edge of that field that we'll do with, we we'll, might as well just do that with the Valtra because we've already got that one hooked in. And then we can run the Valtra back. We can get the forage wagon on. We can put the brake onto the other tractor and we'll be able to get cracking with the hay just as soon as we've done this little bit here. So two passes, I think along that side of the field with the cultivator plus a single pass along that side of the field with the cultivator will be enough I don't think we will need to do very much more than that so you come out like that and then now we go up here and then I can set the GPS here and kind of lock that into place back you up a bit back you up a bit more a little bit more. I think that's probably all right. You can always tidy up that corner a little bit afterwards. That tree is definitely going to be in our way. I am definitely going to want to remove it. So that it's, it's on my to-do list. I've got that one earmarked for removal. Probably that little one over in the corner over there. The beech tree over there. But um, is it a beech or a birch? Birch, I think beach. Anyway. Around here. Last pass. We won't do any more than this. It'll be too tight to that road if I do any more than this. So you go up to there. That fits beautifully anyway. Out onto that corner. There we go. Made to measure. Look at that. Absolutely spot on perfect. And we go right down to here, and then that's done. So then I can go and get the cultivator, and I will bring it back here on this tractor, and we will start working this field right here. And, I mean, I think it's a fair swap, really, this one. We, we start working this one as an arable field, and we've lost the one that we had back in the yard, the little tiny one. I, I'm, I'm quite happy with that kind of trade-off, really. I think that we've, we've done all right out of that little swap. You know, all things considered. Let's turn off the GPS completely. This corner here is a little bit of a mess. And bring that around like that. There, okay. I think that's about it for ploughing. Let's not do any more there. I am, I think, going to... Do I want to tidy up that corner a bit? No, I don't think I need to. This corner over here is actually, I think, all right as well. I know what we do. We will go back to the yard, we'll get the cultivator, and we'll start working this field. And then if we decide afterwards that actually we can do it a little bit. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.